she's literally a one woman construction crew doing all the heavy lifting and all that stuff downtown. ACAO, because she always tells me don't leave the A out. Courtney Scott with the city of Baton Rouge, East Baton Rouge Parish. What's going on? Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I told you so. Okay, people heard me mention going in the break, safe, hopeful, healthy. Yes. What is safe, hopeful, healthy? Um, safe, hopeful, healthy is a public health approach All right. to making a whole, well, and healthy community. Okay. And when you think about that, it's like, what does that mean, Courtney, exactly? It means that, um, of course, gun violence is one of our biggest challenges that we work to work work through. And the biggest part about that, Clay, is addressing those root causes, uh, addressing education, mm -hmm. access to resources, right. mental health and behavioral right. health, right. intergenerational trauma. I heard a statement yesterday, and I have to give credit. You know, we like to take words sometimes, so I got to give credit to Lindsay Bluen from uh, YWCA, and she talked about intergenerational health, mm -hmm. not just wealth, but making sure that people were healthy, making sure they were whole, mm -hmm. and that they felt safe. And that's what Safe Hopeful Healthy does. It's so interesting because you have had a megaphone trying to explain to people why this investment speaks to all of these other things that yes. people talk about. Gun violence, mm -hmm. the, the, the truancy issues, Absolutely. Uh, drug issues in the streets. All of those things can be positively Im impacted on the back end by this investment on the front end. Absolutely. So why do you think people still struggle to get it? Because some struggle to get it. Absolutely. You know, we look at challenges sometimes and uh, we are polarized by what we see in the media. Mm -hmm. We are polarized by narratives that make us talk. Well, we need to be polarized by the fact that individual people have challenges doing what some of us find very easy to do right. every day. Right. And that is making a good decision. Yeah. Handling our anger, processing our emotions. And that's exactly what happens when you see gun violence play out. Mm -hmm. It is people making decisions in 30 to 50 seconds that will impact all of us and themselves for the rest of their lives. What is the biggest win that you can say you've achieved since the mayor launched this program and, and you've been basically the, the person driving it. What's the biggest win? I think there's two things. Number one, we have seen a reduction in violence. That's true. Um, last year we had a 23% reduction, mm -hmm. but the biggest part about that is understanding that just because we see decreases, do people feel safe? Mm -hmm. The second win that I would say is that we have galvanized over 185 organizations, wow. businesses, and institutions to come together to say, we want to step up and stop violence before it occurs. That may not seem like a win to many people because it's a win. <laughs> it, but some people may not think so because it's not a data point that you yeah. can put on paper. But how many times have you seen people in our community working at the same table? Mm -hmm to say, let me just do my part, not worried about all that my organization does, just give me my chunk of the pie and let's do this together. You know, Picasso said, good artists create, great artists copy. <laughs> and you have been able to go to other cities to see what's working to bring it back here, to not reinvent the wheel. Absolutely. What city would you tell Baton Rougeans watching that you have been most impressed with? Um, there's two, okay. uh, Washington, D.C. Okay. and Newark, New Jersey. All right. And I am not comparing data, right. not apples for apples, right. because these are two large metropolitan cities. But the way that they have put community, their municipal government, and their state and federal government together to pool and leverage resources to make results, those two cities are getting it right. Also creating these offices of violence prevention that allow the city to provide the resources to community because they're the closest to the problem. I got a minute left and I'm gonna throw two questions at you at once. The second one being how can people learn more about this? But before then, how do we make people understand how important all this is? Yeah, um, two things. One, people can go to safehopefulhealthybr.com safehopefulhealthybr.com. The data's there, mm -hmm. ways to connect are there and the existing programs are there. The best way that we make people connect is to find out what makes their heart beat, and we have to incorporate that. She's absolutely incredible, ACAO, and I'm, I, I could give you a rough time, but I'm not gonna do it, because she, she'll catch me after the segment is over. <laughs> Talking about, you know Tawana Harris, we, we both love yes. Tawana Harris. That. Yes. She's gonna be on the set next to talk about Domestic Violence Awareness Month and her event taking place on the 21st. Tawana Harris is here, and then Higher Grounds. Oh, I can't wait to introduce you to Dr. Felicia Young. No relation, because I'm sure she's smarter than me back next.